Hey, Evelyn. When are you finally going to move out of the house? Don't you know that this house belongs to my husband's family? It's high time that you left. <laughs> Could you have any shame living here rent-free and using up all the hot water? Wait, what? What do you mean? This isn't your husband's family's house. It's my family's house. And I don't have any plans to move out anytime soon, so I'm really not quite sure what you mean by that. We made an agreement, Emma. You and William would help out around the house and I wouldn't charge you rent. That way, you could save up for your own place eventually. Oh, you really can be such a pain to deal with. Do you know that? Just how long are you going to make us all live together, huh? Don't you realize that it's high time you moved out? So that William and our son and I can enjoy all of this house without you cramping our style? Why do you always have to be such a burden on everyone and get in the way of what they want, huh? Emma, are you serious? What makes you think that you can treat me this way after what I did for your son? Are you really forgetting that I practically emptied my savings to pay for the $40,000 surgery that he had? You came to me begging for help because you said that you two wouldn't be able to afford it at all. Remember? And so what? What's the point you're even trying to make with that, huh? You think just because you helped us pay for some measly surgery that it makes you a saint or something like that? You think it means that we can never ask for anything of you ever again? Or that you can boss us around just because of that? Of course not. I don't think that. Emma, I really don't understand what's gotten into you. I mean, is this even really you? I don't think that I've ever seen you talk or write to me with this kind of tone. We've been friends for years. Practically family. And this is how you treat me now? You should know that the reason I held back and didn't talk to you this way earlier was exactly because you did pay for little Tommy's surgery. But now all of that is over and done with. I really just don't have any use for you at all. So why don't you pack your bags and get out? There are plenty of retirement homes you could move into. I really have no idea what you're talking about at all. What does that have to do with the other at all? Are you just saying that you've been letting me live here because I had paid for your son's surgery before? You know, that's not how this works, right? We were supposed to be helping each other out, remember? Of course, it's how it works. I consider that surgery you paid for is you paying us rent. And now that you haven't paid any rent in a while, I just don't see the point in us living together anymore. Besides, William's family offered us a place to stay, and it's much bigger than this house. We wouldn't have to keep stepping all over each other anymore. And that's really how you feel about this whole living situation that we have? Here I thought that you were such a kind and understanding person. But I guess you were just hiding this side of yourself from me. This whole time, you were just waiting for a better opportunity to kick me out. Well, fine then. If that's how you really feel, I'll pack my bags and leave. But don't expect me to come running next time you or little Tommy need something. Well, I really didn't have much choice, did I? I knew I needed to treat you kindly since you were paying for Tommy's surgery and all. But once I heard that William's family had a huge house with a pool and a games room, I thought that we all might be able to move in there and enjoy being closer to his family. Unfortunately, it was only after we decided to move in there with no vision of Sugar Plum Dreams that I realized you were also living here. You have no idea how disappointing that was. It felt like someone had stolen the air right out of my lungs. I'm sorry you were disappointed, Emma, but I was living here first, so it's not like I was trying to let you down with my mere presence. This house has been my sanctuary for years. And of course, it's not that I blame you for wanting to stay here. This house is practically in mint condition, and the location can't be beat. But I thought that once we moved in with dreams of family movie nights and barbecues, you would think more seriously about moving out. And that was already a long time ago when you were still living here, taking up space that could have been William's man cave. Well, I don't know what you want me to say. This house has been in my family for generations. My parents raised me here. And my brothers and I spent our entire childhoods running around these halls. So I can't just pack up my bags and leave this place like it was never mine. Well, don't you realize that you're keeping other people waiting with your selfishness? Don't you think you've been squatting here long enough already? I bet if you got up and moved out of the house, you would lose all those silly little feelings of attachment. Besides, now that you've served your purpose by paying for Tommy's surgery, I don't see why you think you should get to stay in this house any longer. We're practically strangers now living under the same roof. Emma, have you not been reading these texts? 
I'm trying to tell you that this house belongs to my family. That's why I'm living here. And that's why I'm going to continue to live here. This isn't some charity case and I'm not some freeloader. You really just don't know anything at all, do you? Don't you know that houses always go to the eldest child in this family? That means this house didn't actually go to you. It went to your brother, William, didn't it? So why don't you go out and find someone to marry you so that you can finally just leave us alone and let William have what's rightfully his? Well, have you talked to my brother about this? What does William have to say about you trying to kick me out of the house like this? Because the last time I spoke to him, he was talking about fixing up the guest room for his college buddy who's coming to visit. Oh, don't you worry about William. He completely agrees with what I'm doing here. After all, you're squatting on his birthright and we've been very patient with you, letting you stay here rent-free for as long as we have, don't you think? Look, I'm not trying to say that this house won't ultimately end up going to William, but I'm just saying that you need to be a little more patient. These things need more time to unfold and happen. You may have your pace, but I have my pace and it's a lot faster than yours. Now, why can't you just move out already? Actually, I have something that I've been wanting to talk to you for a while now. You've been going in and out of my room without asking me, haven't you? Going into your room? What are you talking about? I practically own this house, so I'll go into whichever room I please. Thank you very much. And just what's wrong with me going into your room? Is there something you're trying to hide? If you don't like me doing it, then maybe you should just move out. Emma, please. We've talked about this before. And I just don't want you snooping around my room if there's no need for you to be in there. Besides, I have a lot of important things that my parents left me in there. I would just appreciate as few people as possible passing through there, if that's all right. Like I said, if you don't like me going into your room, then how about you pack up your bags and move out? Because otherwise, we're just going to have the same conversation over and over again. Well... I suppose it really is starting to seem that way, isn't it? Why do you have to be like this? If you don't like it, Evelyn, you know exactly what you can do to solve this issue. But don't pretend like you can just squat here forever because you paid for one lousy surgery. I'm going to have to chat with my brother about this. I'll need some time to think, okay? Hey, William, are you there? I kind of needed to talk to you a little bit about Emma. Is now a good time to have this chat? Oh, hey there, sis. Did you want to talk to me about my wife? Well, sure, I guess I have time. What's on your mind? Is everything all right? You sound a little stressed. Well, the thing is that Emma has been demanding that I move out of the family house. Not only that, but she said that you agreed with her that I should leave. It feels like the rug has been pulled out from under me. Am I really causing that much trouble being at home? I thought we were all getting along okay. Wait, what? Evelyn, come on. You know that I would never ask you to move out. It's like you said, this is our family house and you're as entitled to it as I am. We grew up here together, chasing fireflies in the backyard and building forts in the living room. I would never ever try and kick you out of there. Oh, thank goodness. I knew that didn't sound like you at all. I just knew it, but I guess that means that Emma was just lying to me about what you said to try and make me believe her. This whole thing has just been so confusing. You know, I haven't told many people about this, but something really has changed in Emma lately. She just doesn't seem to know how to act decent around people anymore. She's just gotten herself so worked up about this house, saying that we're the only ones who should get to use it. And I've tried to explain to her that this is the house where you and I grew up and that we both have a lot of precious memories here. Especially you, considering you were the one who practically raised me half the time. But she just doesn't want to hear any of it. I see. To be honest, I didn't want to say anything either, but I could kind of sense a tension growing between the two of you. It's like you always have something to say. But I can see you holding yourself back and letting Emma speak her mind. So I guess I was just a bit surprised when she started talking to me about all of this too. I thought... Maybe things were just a little strained, but I never expected her to try and kick me out. So I guess she was pretty forceful in asking you to move out then. Did she give any reasons or was it just an outright demand? She certainly didn't hold back on the insults or low blows. I'll say that much. 
and she is even acting like it was no big deal about Tommy's surgery. She just said that was how I paid rent to keep living with her. That one really blew my mind. I mean, how could you act like that towards someone? It makes me question everything I thought I knew about her. You mean she wasn't being grateful at all for what you did for our son? Isn't that the least she could do? Especially considering you practically emptied your savings to cover it. Grateful is certainly not the word that I would use to describe how Emma was acting towards me. She just acted as if it was a given that I should have paid for the surgery, but not that she should let me keep living in my own damn house. And when she said that you agreed with her, well, that's when I knew that I had to talk to you about this. Because, frankly, it felt like a betrayal on both your parts. I see. Well, I really am so, so sorry that she has been acting that way towards you. It's like you're a stranger in your own home. And that's just not right. I heard her complaining about you asking her to not go in your room, too. I guess she said you were being territorial or something. And here I thought that you were actually going to get along while living here. This whole situation is causing a lot of tension, and I just wish things could be different. Wait, what? She took things out of my room? When did this happen? Do you remember what she took? Um, I thought she had taken some bags and makeup and stuff like that, but, but she said you lent her some of those too. Maybe she just borrowed them and forgot to mention it? What? I haven't lent her anything at all. And if she's taking things like that, then she could actually be taking some of mom's things. You know that I don't really care about handbags or makeup or stuff like that. So what I have in my room of that is all mom's stuff. Do you remember how much she spent on nice things like that, right? Those were sentimental items, and if they're gone... But she told me that you lent them to her. I just don't really know what to think now. Maybe there's been some kind of misunderstanding? I really just wish this wasn't happening, though. This whole thing is causing a rift between us, and it feels awful. Well, this is exactly why I was telling her to stay out of my room to begin with. I was worried something like this might happen. Now I feel violated. It's my own home and I can't even feel safe in my own home. So then you really think that she's orchestrating this big lie or something like that? Telling you one thing and then telling me something else? Is that what you think is happening here? Because honestly, that wouldn't be entirely out of character for her lately. At this point, I really don't know what else to believe but that. How could it be anything else? This whole situation is making me question everything I thought I knew about her. Well, look, I'm certainly not trying to make excuses for her, but you might want to know that when she was little, her dad actually robbed his own house before running away. It basically meant that her mom had to raise Emma with virtually no savings or assets to speak of. Maybe that's where she gets this entitlement complex from? Oh, I see. Well, I had no idea about any of that, but I guess I would have just thought she might empathize with us a bit more. Especially considering I practically emptied my savings to pay for Tommy's surgery. I still just can't understand why she would want to kick me out of the house I've been living in for all this time. It's like she's trying to rewrite history. I know. I really just don't know where she gets some of these ideas from sometimes. It's like she's a completely different person lately. I really did hope that moving in here would help her make friends and settle in. But instead, it seems like she's just causing problems. No, I know what you mean. I also hoped that you guys living here would bring us all closer together. I think maybe there might have been a few times that I ignored red flags from Emma, hoping that it would all work itself out. But I guess maybe we should have been more proactive at setting boundaries and having open communication instead of hoping it would all work out. I think you might be right about that, but let me try and talk to her. I mean, I'm not sure she realized just quite how much you've actually done for her son and for me. Maybe if I can get her to see things from your perspective. Well, okay. I just don't want to be the reason why you two get into a fight. This whole situation is just causing so much stress, and I don't know how much more I can take. Emma, did you come into my room again? I thought I told you to stop doing that without my permission. And did you take stuff from here too? I noticed so many things missing from where they should be. Why don't you ever listen to me when I tell you not to come into my room without asking me first? Have you no respect for my privacy? You know what? I've just had about enough out of you. Do you think that I'm stupid? Do you really think that I don't know what's going on? Don't play dumb with me, Evelyn. Do you really think that I don't know that you're just after the money that's in this house? That's the real reason why I can't stand the thought of living with you another minute. You're nothing but a gold digger. And I won't let you take advantage of me or my family any longer. Emma, that's a horrible thing to say. 
Where in the world did you even come up with such a ridiculous accusation? I just want to know why you think you have the right to go into my room without my permission. What makes you think you can do that and take things out of there as well? This is a blatant violation of my trust and I won't stand for it any longer. I can do that because I need to collect rent from you somehow. This house is in a charity case, you know? Tommy is going to need another surgery and I don't have the money for it. So if you thought that you were going to get to live here rent-free forever, then you're dead wrong. You need to contribute your fair share, just like everyone else. But I already contribute $1,000 a month to the house and expenses and stuff. You know that perfectly well. Besides, I don't see why I should have to pay rent to live in the house that belongs to my family. After all, the mortgage is already paid off, so why can't I just keep paying $1,000 a month like I have been? Why are you so determined to try and kick me out of my own home? I just can't understand that. You're acting like a stranger, not my sister-in-law. You have no idea just how long I've been holding back for the sake of my son. That's why I've been so stressed out about everything lately. Not only that, but you know that I only have a part-time job that barely pays me anything. So why do you think a thousand bucks a month is enough for me? Don't you have any sympathy for a single mother who's just trying to make ends meet? I don't know what you mean by that. I don't pay $1,000 a month so that you can go out and have fun. I'm putting that towards the house so that we can eat and pay the utilities and things like that. And just why are you wanting more to go out when your own son is in the hospital again? Shouldn't your priorities be with him right now? Oh, shut up. You're not my mother, and you're not Tommy's mother either. How dare you try and tell me how I should live my life or raise my son? I'm sick of having you around here judging me. I want you to pack up your bags, and I want you out of here right now. This conversation is over. Well, then fine. If that's really what you want, then I'll leave. But you'll regret this. Don't think for a second that I won't tell William everything. Good luck with the three other surgeries Tommy is going to need. You're going to need all the help you can get. What in the world are you talking about? There's no three surgeries. My little tummy is all done with those and as healthy as a horse. What are you even on about? You don't actually think that's true, do you? Don't you know anything about your son's condition at all? The first surgery that I paid for was only the first of a four-part sequence. Tommy still has three more surgeries to go. The doctor said that his disease was advancing and that the process involved repeated surgeries. Wait, what? But I mean, you're telling me my son is going to need three more surgeries just to have a chance at surviving? My heart feels like it's dropped into my stomach. I haven't been sleeping well lately, but this, this is a whole new level of worry. That's right, but this is a good thing. The doctors are very optimistic about this treatment plan. They believe that if he goes through these next three surgeries, then he'll have a much better chance of living a long and healthy life. But I guess you'd rather I just put more money in the house so that you can spend it on yourself, right? Because that's certainly the way it seems with all this talk about me paying rent. Oh, I see. Why didn't you tell me this from the very start? If I had known Tommy needed more surgeries, I never would have even brought up the whole rent thing. Here I was thinking you were trying to steal the house from under me. And you were just trying to help my son all along. Well, we are talking about it now. And when I get back home, you, my brother, and I are all going to talk about this in person. Your son still needs surgeries, and this isn't something that's going to be settled over text. We need to come up with a plan, a financial plan, and most importantly, an emotional support plan. Tommy is going to need his family around him during all of this. Well, great. Then... Let's just all meet at home and we can talk about how much money we'll need from you to get through this. Maybe we can figure out a payment plan or something. You really are so oblivious. Do you even realize that? Do you ever get tired of using your son to try and squeeze money and pity and favors out of people? Even when it came to you stealing from my room, you used your son's medical bills as an excuse for what you were doing. It's like you think everyone else is blind to your little games. That isn't true at all. You really have no idea what you're talking about, Evelyn. I wouldn't dream of using Tommy like that. He's my son, and all I want is what's best for him. Well, I just want you to know that if I move out of this house, I'm not going to pay for another one of Tommy's surgeries. 
You and William are just going to have to figure something out on your own. But if it's really what you want, then I'll pack up my things and I'll move out of the house like you want. You can have the house all to yourself and you can figure out how to pay for Tommy's treatment on your own. Now, hold on just a second. Can't you pick up on a joke when someone tells you one? Of course you can stay in the house. We'd be more than happy to let you stay. You and I can be friends again and everything. Let's just forget all this nonsense about rent and, and move on. Wow, I really don't know whether or not I should be shocked or just disappointed at your change in tone. But if you think that we're going to be friends, after you said what you said to me, after you stole my mom's heirlooms from my room, you should just know that I'm not going to forgive you for what you've done that easily. Trust is a fragile thing, Emma, and you've shattered it with your actions. Your mom's heirlooms? What are you talking about? Heirlooms? Is that what those bags and things were? I mean, all the bags and makeup and things like that that you've stolen from my room and you've gone in there? Those weren't mine. They were things that my mom left behind after she passed away. You took them out of my room and used them like you would any other accessory or product. Don't you have any respect for the dead? Those things meant the world to me. Oh, wait. Those were your mom's? I had no idea about that. But I hardly use them at all. I promise that the bags only have a little bit of wear and tear, but... But if it's really that big of a deal, I'll return them all. My stomach churns with guilt. I can't believe I was so insensitive. It's not a big deal, Emma. These were sentimental items. Things that brought back so many memories of my mom. And for you to just take them without asking. It feels like a violation. I'm sorry. I really just thought I was borrowing them. I didn't know they belonged to your mom. I swear, I wouldn't have touched them if I had known. You had no right to borrow them in the first place. I already asked you to stop using my things, didn't I? You just waltzed into my room and took whatever you wanted. It makes me feel like you don't respect me or the space that I need. I know, but I just... Well, I never saw you using them, and I thought it was such a waste to leave them like that. Those purses were gorgeous, and the makeup looked barely touched. Look, I'll replace them, okay? I'll find something just as nice, something you'll love even more. You realize that you still hadn't even apologized for what you'd done yet, right? Replacing things isn't the same as understanding why something was wrong. It's not about that money, Emma. It's about the disrespect. Okay, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have acted the way I did. And this house belongs to you, okay? So please don't leave us. This whole thing has been a mess. And I know I've said some awful things. But Tommy and I need you. We need your support. Especially with everything going on with him. I still don't think that you're ready to act like the mother that you ought to be to Tommy. Maybe you need to focus on that before you worry about anything else. How can you say that? What does that even mean? I mean, here you are, acting like you need money for his surgery. But you've been stealing and selling all just to get a little extra spending money for yourself. Not only that, but I overheard you on the phone one day talking to someone who sounded like another man. You were bragging all about the wonderful things that were in your house that you can sell. I have to say that I was really surprised when I first heard that though. Then I realized that it wasn't that you didn't have enough money for Tommy's surgery. You were just hiding the money you did have for my brother. Well, now we've got you and there's nowhere for you to go. I'll tell my brother all about this and he'll know how to deal with you. In the end, I presented my brother with the proof I had of Emma's theft. I even hired a detective to look into who the man could be. The detective found proof that Emma was having an affair with this man, and that led to William asking for a divorce. As part of the divorce proceedings, the court ordered Emma to pay for all of Tommy's remaining surgeries while William was given full custody. William apologized for all that he had put me through with Emma, but I was just glad that Tommy was going to be okay. I have no idea where Emma went after that. And as long as she's keeping up with her payments, I really don't care. 
Meanwhile, it took some time for William to begin to put himself out there in the dating world as a single father. But eventually, he met a new woman who he proposed to. William's new fiancé was much more independent and showed no interest in wanting to live in the same house. That suits me just fine. It suits me even better that we're able to get along and that never once have I had to ask her not to go into my room when she and William have come over to visit.